housemate Sean uh, got progressively worse with cancer very fast and so I stepped out to be her caregiver and she passed on May 18th and then very soon after that I moved so I'm still in Sedona uh, I feel like this is my home I'll be here for well who knows <laughs> I've learned not to make those kinds of plans um, but uh, what I've been realizing is uh, some things about self-love and when I truly follow my heart that I am indeed taken care of and supported. So I wanted to share a little story with you about what happened with Sean. So when I stepped up to be her caregiver, it was kind of by default. Um, yes, I did have a choice, but she had given so much to me unconditionally that my heart was just like, well, yeah, of course I want to be here for you and take you to the hospital and then come visit you every day at the hospital and, you know, whatever is required from me, I want to be able to do that for you. Um, but I ran into some challenges with myself about the whole self-love thing because um, it takes a lot for me to film myself before I can give in that way, going into the hospital environment, being in the car a lot on long trips, you know, all those things take energy from me. So when I started doing those things, sometimes daily, um, it was taking a toll on me. And I was thinking, you know, all these things I've been preaching about self-love, I'm not doing them anymore. Um, but it's not completely true. I, le I learned to find the balance. And the, the aha that I had today is that actually I was engaging in self-love because what I was doing is I was investing in my own growth, my own evolution by being stretched in that way. And while all that happened, I was being totally supported and taken care of. And the miracle that happened after Sean's passing was that her community saw what I had done and they set up a fund for me uh, because I had put my business in slow motion. I was, you know, putting a lot of energy and attention on Sean, um, which again, I wanted to do. Uh, but her community saw what I had done and they created a fund for me and put money into the fund. And for me, it was just like this huge trust booster that, yes, if I follow my heart, I will be taken care of and supported always and always and always. And following my heart is the greatest self-love that I can give to me. It's the greatest act of self-love to follow my heart. And so I invite you to step out and trust and follow your heart. What is it that your heart is longing for you to do? What is it that your heart is calling you to do? And if you don't know the answer to that, ask. Put your hands over your heart and say, what are you trying to communicate to me? Please, share. And what I did for myself when I wasn't clear about what my heart wanted was, I would say, communicate to me in such a way that my intellect, my cognitive mind will understand because I'm not used to your language, so I need tangibles, I need specifics. Heart, please communicate with me in a way that my intellectual mind will understand. And it will, it will, it will do that for you. So that's my invitation to you. Follow your heart, see where it leads you, and step out in faith and trust because it's not always easy, but big rewards are on their way to you when you do that. Namaste, many blessings.